Taking my butt off because I moved to Raw Land. I don't know if you can see out there. I got my little baby donkey, my mini horse, somewhere out there if you can see. But uh, I've been working my ass off and I wanted to talk about keto, carnivore, but I also wanted to definitely, this mirror is just reflecting weird stuff. I live in an RV camper, for those who don't understand this nice, ugly decorum, but, uh, <laughs> oh my goodness, I hope I put this on public. Oh, I did. Okay, cool. So, basically, I want to talk about, it's not that hard for anything. It's not that hard to move out of a state that you feel is completely jacking you up. It's not that hard to change your health. It's not that hard... To move to raw land it is not that hard it's not that hard to stay young it's fabulous forever yes honey it's not that hard to get the muscles it's not that hard to balance your hormones it's not that hard to fix the gut and i want to explain some of these things and tie it all together right if you guys have any questions feel free at any time the first thing i want to show you though it is not that hard to this is the first thing I want to show you. It's not that hard. Right now, it's to show you how easy it is to make completely affordable, non-cured in any kind of way, bacon. I'm making some right now. Let me show you guys. Okay, come on, Steph. I'm trying to get the... Okay. So, let's do this. This is my whole RV. Now, I'm... I found you guys a friggin' awesome local butcher. They have their own pigs, chickens, and cows, and they process their own meat right there in Tennessee. So what I bought is this down here, and this is pork belly. And I say this to all my clients and all my people. Ask them to take the pork belly and, and just cut it into bacon strips. They may not want to, but they will do it. So I said, can you go and make some bacon strips on my pork belly? It's not that hard. And this per pound, $4. Okay. Four bucks for free ranging pigs. Now, I'm going to put a strip of little bacon. Thunder's at my front door again, people. We can't make this stuff up. Hold on one second. And there's two pieces here connected and I cannot hold with one hand and do this all at the same time. Okay, here we go. And this bacon grease is lard. This is great for the brain. People have this stupid concept that bacon is, porks are unclean. How ridiculous. But first, let's go say hello to Boo Boo. Or maybe I should get a carrot for him. Let's get a carrot first for Thunder. Okay, my beautiful people. Let's see. Let's get a, a carrot. A carrot for my boy. Okay. Because he's always chilling at my front door. All right, Star. You want to say hello? Oh, well, hello. Oh, goodness. Well, hi. You gonna let flies in because I'm cooking? So, yeah. Oh, <laughs> it smells the bacon. <laughs> Horses lift their lip when they're smelling. Hi, baby. Give a kiss. Give a kiss. Thunder, can I have a kiss? Oh, me. Oh. Have a kiss. Oh, you're so sweet. Okay, hold on. You get one, and then you got to leave me alone, okay? All right? Is that yummy, Mr. Hurt Eyeball? Hmm? Rubbing that eyeball because he had cancer. Look how handsome you are with that blue eye. Look at that blue eye. Oh, my goodness. Okay, one more. One more. Okay, boo boo. That's it. No more. All right, guys. Let's get back to it. All right. So I wanted to show you how easy it was. Now all I do is add some Redmond's real salt to it, and this is my bug zapper. 
All I do is add some Redmond's Real Salt to my bacon. My pork, it's basically pork belly, which can be from 94 to 98% pure fat. And afterwards, I heat the fat and boom, I save it as lard. It's that simple. And I reuse this. People are like, oh my God, isn't the pig unclean? I can't stand when people say that nonsense. Let me go sit down. My bacon is cooking. What's sizzling is bacon. Okay, let me sit back here. Down here. Okay. Um, what I want a lot of people to understand, especially like things aren't that hard. Stop like con con convoluting me. And the pigs aren't clean. Okay, let me tell you people who live in the city. Let me tell you right now. And I'm going to hit your guys' questions in a minute. Listen to me and listen to me very well. All animals have parasites. Okay, I have to go from one to three months, deworm my horses, my donkey, my two horses constantly. Otherwise, they're itching their booties on a pole or a tree because they have worms in their boo-boo. Now, the last place I was at, the horses there were mineral deficient. And they were eating my horse's poop. You see, because I give my horses minerals and electrolytes. So here you have poop that's on the ground. And flies lay larvae in that. All kind of parasites in that poop. And then those horses are eating my horse's poop. And you guys that think that pigs are unclean, cows are unclean, pigs are unclean, horses are unclean, and humans sure are dang unclean. Okay. Now, um, guys, it's so weird. People are like, I make pigs and stickers. If you didn't keep them in pens and just throw the chum on the ground and have them eat where they're pooping, if you keep a pig in a big area where they're just not confined and they can roam acres and forage they're amazing okay pigs have parasites horses have parasites cows have parasites and guess what y'all got a ton of parasites too but at the the opposite end of that a lot of you guys don't realize that you're gonna get all this amazing mono unsaturated fat and pork people think it's high in poly it's high in mono and it's so good for the brain, lard. And when you cook it, there's no smoking in my kitchen, in my RV kitchen. There's no smoking of the of the fat. Lord have mercy. Okay, that was the first thing I wanted to show you guys, how easy it was to make bacon out of pork belly. I also wanted to get, let you guys know, it is not that hard to get your body in order. It's just time, consistency, and dedication, and most most important, experimentation. Stop listening to these gurus tell you a bunch of garbage that you can get your salt from meat, or you can just eat meat with some salt, or the amount of protein doesn't matter, and if you eat too much fat, you're going to get fat. All my, every, all the fasting, OMAD. I hope you guys are starting to get it now that you're being completely bamboozled. Uh, it's not that hard. I think you guys make this complicated. It's not complicated. Good health is not complicated. Now, let me see what you guys are saying, some of the things. Um, let's see. K and J says, I'm 47, started having s severe panic attacks a day, just out of the blue, had labs done and told I'm told I'm an early menopause and that I have very low estrogen progesterone levels. Doc wants me on HRT's thoughts. This to me, it's not that complicated. But the more I talk to people, the more they're unwilling to change their life. Number one, you have to get all of the xenoestrogens out of your body, out of your life. Xenoestrogens are estrogens that are outside. They're plastic chemicals. They mimic estrogens, estrogen, and the receptors, the receptor sites for estrogen think it's estrogen and lets it right on in. They become estrogen dominant. So these are non-organic 
uh, vegetables. Oh, why did I not mute my phone? Non-organic non vegetables, okay, because the pesticides are made to, yeah, I said this last stream. It is plastics, it's perfume, it's chemicals, it's makeup, plastic bottles, um, your salads, eating out at restaurants, the, the non, um, uh, the milk, the dairy, you guys are like, oh my God, I do grass fed beef. And then you'll eat cheese. That's not, that's just loaded with hormones. Now, with that said, um, the first thing I would do is get all the xenoestrogens out as much as you can. I would also try to detoxify that liver by doing some milk thistle to get that freaking estrogen out of your liver. Some flushes to poop out some of the estrogen. I would get your, get to sleep early, go to bed early, diaphragmatic breathe, exercise, get your blood sugar under control, do a keto omnivore the right way. I mean, there is like 20,000 ways to do it. Yeah, don't do HRTs. They're not really good for women or men, but especially women. Okay. Do I need to check my bacon yet? All right, let's go on. So electrolytes are not that difficult. Dealing with your gut is not that. It's not that hard. People make it difficult because they're listening to gurus tell you what you want to hear. I want to let you guys know right now. Uh, a good mi milk thistle. You're just going to have to go and do your own um, uh, researching and find what product has the best reviews. Right? A milk thistle that doesn't have pesticides on it. I mean, that's how I find everything. I research it. Is it, CC says, is it safe to do magnesium citrate in, in the morning and magnesium glycinate at night? Of course it's safe. As long as you don't have a histamine response to either, why would it not be safe? Unless you were to just eat the whole bottle and then that would not be safe. All right, Brick's like, check your bacon. I'm going to check it right now. I have it on the lowest setting, but I'm going to check. Abdullah. I know I've been so busy trying to get set up on Roland. Let me check my bacon. My pork belly that I made into bacon. Ah, oh, yes. Okay. So I, I feel like eating some bacon right now. How gross is that to eat on camera? Let me see how weird that is. I'm going to put some salt on it. Um, what's up, D to 40, what, fitness? So here is some bacon, right? This is bacon. And it's actually pork belly. And I was trying to explain before how amazing lard is for the brain. A lot of people still have fear of the parasites, but they don't realize all them animals have parasites. <laughs> Thank you. Doesn't that look delicious? Oh my God. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. That's about three ounces. All right, Daryl. Hmm. I've been on love with the Roxin thyroid medication for 10 years and it's dangerous to just stop taking it. Um, not dangerous, but merci beaucoup. Merci. I wouldn't say it's dangerous. I would say that it's going to throw your hormones and your endocrine system in a loop if you just stop taking it. So I know a lot of women that just stop. They're just like, I'm over it. I know you're a dude, but it's totally up to you. I don't know who Jim Gaffigan is. Sorry. Oh, God. Maybe I should plug in my RV Christmas lights. 
Um, so, hmm. He does baking jokes. Okay, cool. This is so good. I can't. It's like, I want to talk to you guys. I want to eat at the same time. Okay. No, this is lame to talk and eat. Now, it's not that hard. Here, everyone's like, oh, where do I source? I found, even in California, I found some pastured pork. I found... It's so funny because the, um, the farm's like, well, with our cows, we grain feed them through the winter. And he's like, most people do that. You got to imagine that, like, there's just not enough nutrition in grass. I'm starting to learn this because my horses are partially grain fed, right? Hey, child, once you pop, you cannot stop. I need to put this plate away from me. Okay. Mmm, 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 mmm. I'm learning a lot about, since I was living on a lot of ranches over the last year and a half. City girl gone country. I should be like, black city girl goes country. Um... The grass. Problem with cows or any ruminant animals is that they're foraging on the same terrain all day. That's not normal in nature. That's why I cannot wait to finally get fenced because I only have fenced about two acres and I want the whole 10 acres fenced so they can forage because there are so many species of plants all over my property. He thunder did smell it. They lift their li they lift their lip up when they are sn smelling or in pain. So open the door and he sniffs this pork. You know what's so funny? I had liver the other day, and I keep trying to keep all the meat away from their face because I'm like in their mind. I think, and it, nobody better bitch than I'm digressing because that's just how I do it. But. I had the liver and I was trying to keep it away from thunder because I was thinking, oh, it must smell like ass, ass, rub hole to them. It must smell stank, like it must smell like just corpse. And he sniffs it. The liver, I'm not even kidding. And he starts licking my hand where I had liver crumbs on the hand. He legit was not disgusted by the liver at all. I know, he's the tilt of the head. So I found that to be quite interesting because if a horse is starving, it will eat meat. I do have, I have a creek on my property. Now it hasn't rained enough right now to fill the creek up, but there is fresh water, water creek on my property. It was one of the cells that got me to get it, buy it. It goes from about a foot deep and about three or four feet wide to about 25 feet wide and about 15 feet deep. So it goes small and it goes bigger around the property. And um, yeah, so a lot of you guys don't understand that, that cows are supposed to be eating on all different types of terrain. And for my horses just to eat grass right now, it's like, I don't have Timothy Orchard. I don't have coastal Bermuda. I forget what kind of grass this is, but it's pretty high in protein or pretty high in carbohydrates. And um, they're not getting enough minerals. I have to give them a little bit of grain. I mean, technically they could survive, but if I really wanted them to be stout and healthy, I got to give them a little grain, just a little. And starting to realize that grain is not so terrible for cows. Corn, they're like, oh, I was talking to another, another butcher. They're like, oh, we give the corn, they give, we don't give the whole corn to the cows. We give them the, I forget what part they give the cows, but anyway, I digress. Um, but, um, 
for me, I moved here to Raw Land. And the only thing that was on here, luckily, I don't even know how it was like, it had my name on it, was an RV shelter made out of wood. It looks like a barn and a cement pad. And that is nothing else. No septic, no water, no power, no fence. So you take me from Cal. Everyone's like, oh my God, like, how did you? So... You know, when it comes to the diet, when it comes to moving, I'm gonna go to the front door. Too cute and adorbs. Yeah. That horse, we have a bond, like I can't explain it. Like I freaking I'm in love with that horse. Um, and everybody else is like, he's so gentle. It's beautiful. Um, what's very interesting is that my mom is not well. She started to have very severe leg swelling after she got the thing. Thank you, brother, for pushing my mother to get that thing. She broke out into shings and the goals. Yes, yeah, she broke out into that. Put those two syllables together. And um, her leg starts swelling. So based on that poison, I don't think she's got long left, long left. She is aged on a level that is really sad from being stuck in her home for over two years because you know why and no matter how much i tried to get her out and told her not to to care or listen to any of that she wouldn't she had the neighbors go and shop for her and drop the food off at the front door i'm like stop i told them don't do that anymore you need to be around my, my mother needs to be around people this has got to end this garbage so she came and she's so frail. If you see video of my mom before the Charade Arona Bona, and now the aging of her is like 10 years, legit. And um, Thunder, no, something's wrong. He stood there and he sniffed her head and he rubbed her face. He didn't care that I had cheat treat she was sitting in a chair and she was like oh you're so sweet i'm gonna i'm gonna upload the video and show you guys it's kind of sad and you know because i think he smells not a long life left in her my son my mom did the same a medical person scared her into it but see and and i don't know how your your mom is brooke but my mom is going ever since that I mean on a level that is like the, the speed of her digressing is on a level I can't even measure it's going so fast so bad so fast I'm worried about being able to get any kind of meat at all going into the decade considering oh this is a great subject like how we're going to get meat Considering the, the G-O, <clears throat> I'll call it the government, um, action against events, against the places where there's animals, um, and so on gets us into des desperate relying on the sclovermint. Um, and that is the reason why I moved from Los Angeles. No, no, no. Hollywood, California. And I moved to Texas because I wanted to be in a place where they had this. And uh, I'm just scratching my elbow, YouTube. And so I wanted to move to a place that had them and that people would protect their families and lives. And places where there's more morals. And I mean, instantly when I went to Texas. So for you guys, I never said to anybody where I was in Texas because I don't trust people, right? People are cuckoo. Cr 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 Cocoa Puffs. I was in a town called Pleasanton, Pleasanton, Texas. It's just south of San Antonio. It's a small little farm community, which is hence two of the properties I was on had uh, cows and chickens and hog and um, horses. And I learned a lot and I hated it there. I absolutely friggin hated it. I hated the landscape. 
I, I didn't I didn't dislike the people. People were like they were okay, but they're not as friendly as Tennesseans. I'm gonna check on my bacon, my pork belly that I got at my local farmer butcher. Let me tell you something right now. This is how you do it. Hold on one sec. Oh, hold on, guys. I need to take this other bacon off the plate. Hold on, guys. I'll be right there. You know I don't have a professional channel. I have a real channel. Okay. Okay, let me get back to you guys. Okay. So for those who just came to my channel, I wanted to talk to you about how things aren't that difficult and how they're not that hard. And I, I felt like that's such a good tagline for everything that I've done in the last two years. I think that I do things pretty different than most people at the age that I'm at, which is 50. Well, I'll be 55 and very soon. It's around the corner. So pretty much I'm 55. I was born in 1967. And I never allowed myself to feel that, you know, oh, I want safety. I want um, comfort. When you get too safe, you can't handle when things are not safe. And as someone said, where do I get meat? We're not living in safe times anymore. It's not if we're going to run out of food, it's when. So I was in this psycho rush to find property. Now I thought I found a five acre lot and then that ended up being pretty much awful. The man who was selling it, the surveyed lines, like nothing made sense. He wasn't being completely forthright on where the property lines and he was selling five acre tracks. And I was like, I'm not living in the Brady Bunch country. I mean, we're, we're not doing tracks. Okay. I really want to live on a bigger property. So as fate had it, um, I found a 10 acre lot and I couldn't believe that no one had purchased the land that I'm on, that I literally jumped on a plane. I saw it online three days later, I was here and I was like putting in an offer like that because it's outside of city lines. They had Freshwater Creek, um, it had pastured grass, it had pine trees that I love because I love the West and it had a hill on it and, and it's close to town. And the man who's selling it is like my best friend here now. He's my neighbor because he pretty much sold me his entire yard except for his house. But I, I would, the things that sold me in terms of food that made me really want to move to this area is that I live near the Amish and the Mennonites. That was important to me because I want to learn how they live completely off grid. Now, you do see them at the local Walmart, so that's kind of precarious. But for the most, they live mostly off grid, the Amish. Now, also, I wanted to learn how to farm and I wanted to have chickens. And um, my electrician is like infatuated with me. Face palm. <laughs> It's hard because, you know, you, you don't want, like, you, you want to just tell people, thank you, I don't want your help. But then at the same time, you need the help. So it's like, as a woman, you're like, Arr. but he has a spring, a natural spring, and it comes out pure water. It's been tested. I'm actually using, I don't have a well yet. I got to build a well. Once, once I know where I'm going to build a home on this property, I'm living in an RV. So 
this is what was really smart of me is that I bought an RV camper in Texas. Thank God I did that. I was initially going to look for land that had a house, but the market was so hot when I was searching for land that it made more sense when I was searching for a home with land. It was so expensive. I was like, it's better that I get more acreage and no house and then build a house on that. So of course, cause I use my brain, I found a way to Jimmy rig building a home on the cheap, but still having a freaking awesome home. So, um, I decided to buy this land and put my RV on it and my the neighbor who sold me his land is letting me use his well so I have water then a power pole then I put up a fence but here we go I instantly started asking everybody because I have no shame to start asking where are the farms where are the farms where are the farms I need some I need some healthy animals grass-fed pasture free range I need it now so my electrician has chickens so he's dumping eggs on me all day long and they're pasture okay all they do is eat bugs and stuff you know he gives them bugs and some other stuff um and then he just lets them pick the ground for worms or whatever uh that's where i get my eggs he gives me gallons and gallons of fresh spring water so there's that i still drink distilled water but i now i'm getting fresh spring water and well water the well water here is so good it actually my well water the well the water under my property tastes so good it almost tastes better than spring water uh you can drink right out of the tap it is fan freaking tastic i mean i can't even explain how amazing that is so my whole thing about food and food shortages was i wanted to find property where it had a shallow water table now you guys know i love arizona i love new mexico i love um oregon and washington and idaho and 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 uh, wyoming and colorado the topography and the landscape that is my jam and of course california that's what i love nevada that's what i love i love love okay but i'm worried about shortages of water i have horses if i were by myself i probably would have ended up somewhere that way but i'm glad that the horses got me here because now i have water and i have the amish which they just i bought I don't know, just a couple of dollars. I bought a bunch of zucchini, a bunch of tomatoes, fresh tomatoes, which are nightshades, but I like to have them every once in a while. And cucumber. Okay, just a couple of dollars. Bags of it, because they sell at 50 cents, 20 cents a pound for vegetables. So there's that. There's also the fact that I knew that you the place that things that can grow are radishes mustard and collard greens most of the year here so i found my farms i've got deer on my property if, if we if i was really starving my instagram is stephanie keto jenny you can go see the deer where the horses are watching the deer it's so weird so there's deer on my property and um actually the electrician he's got even more deer on his because he's got 150 acres so it brings me fresh water and he brings me fresh deer meat. Now, what's really amazing is that the butcher that I go to, he's got a farm. I was like, do you have thymus? He was like, yeah, but we throw it away. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Give me thymus. So they sell, so I don't know. I'll show you what he sold me. Let me show you guys. He's like, okay. I mean, we normally throw it away. I was like, you ain't throwing away thymus for me, honey. Okay, guys, so I got, um, this is the, the deer meat right here. This is the deer meat. Look at this thymus. Are you freaking kidding me? And I got three bags of this. 
It's probably around four pounds, three pounds. Okay. Of all finest. It doesn't even fit in my freezer. And I got eight pounds of bacon, pork belly cut into bacon strips. All from the same butcher who raises his own animals. I know where my food's coming from. This back. Oh. Okay, I don't really connect with people who say that, that it's hard. I knew that I knew that I wanted to be moved to a place where I had fresh water, grass, and meat. And the ability, of course, to grow farm or, or to get uh, produce. And this is the reason why I about killed myself to get to Tennessee with two horses and a donkey and no haulers and an RV camper that's almost 31 feet long. Anybody who's been following me knows it's been a journey. So I would say start asking around where your local farms are. Um, a lot of city people are not going to do that. They won't know any better. People don't even know that the bologna or whatever crap that they're eating comes from a pig that had to be slot. Yep, turd. And I mean amber turd. Okay. So, um, the thymus, I think he was selling the thymus for four, $4 a pound. Because they have no use of it. Nobody else eats the thymus except for me. Oh, that's probably loud. Put this in here. It's a little warm in my RV with cooking food. So, um, so I'm fine. I don't feel afraid. If there's food churches, I'm like, <laughs> we've got deer meat, deer meat for days. I have eggs for days. The Amish have produce when they're in season, and the butcher. I mean, I, I mean, there's. I'm gonna have a ton of food. I'm, I'm. With my very clean pork. Olive eater. Is asking. What does thymus taste like? It's one of my favorite animal delicacies. Because. Okay, hold on, let me chew this and swallow it. Thymus is a gland. It helps to produce dimine oxidase. It has dimine oxidase in it, which is an antihistamine, a natural antihistamine. It also has um, um, it's made to help regulate your white blood cell count. So it's for your immune system. And so what I do is is I take it it's it's like white and it's like pure fat, so it's like rubber. It's slimy, it feels like brains when you first take it out of the bag. Mm -hmm. It's gross. But when you grill it, or you air fry that biatch, it'll be the best tasting thing you've almost ever had because it gets crispy, crispy, you, that fat, pure fat, you know when you get like bacon and it's crispy, thymus does the same thing. It's crispy on the outside and a little soft in the middle and it is divine. It has no, you know, it's mostly fat, so it doesn't have the taste of iron that you might find in kidney and in um, liver. So, if you're having issues with histamine, swelling, allergies, seasonal allergies, rashes, diamine, leaky gut histamine, mucus, 
headaches, heart palps. Thymus is your friend. It's amazing for the diamine oxidase benefits and also for your white blood cell count for your immune system. So I highly recommend, you know, luckily I found a place that the local people don't eat thymus. So it's, if I want it, it's right there. Now there's, there's some people up in here and if you guys help like up the stream, it helps bring people to my very humble channel where I'm not professional. I'm just real. I'm real, I'm real not professional, but I'm real. Okay, um, I live right next to Tennessee. If you're in the east part, even more so, I'm so blessed to be in such a lovely area. It's a jungle here, basically lots of nature and I can't, can't stand cities. You know what, I, got, I, I outgrew cities. I mean, I'm from the burbs and city. I, how much thymus and liver is it? it uh, Okay. I need to do this liver. I think I did a liver video. If you have no issues with leaky gut, like largely. Okay. Um, you know that you're absorbing the iron in which you're taking in. You can eat probably up to three ounces a day. No problem. Especially if you're a menstruating woman, you can go even higher. It's amazing. But for people who are eating steak and beef and liver and beef and liver and kidney and beef, and you're constantly overloading an iron with leaky gut, some of y'all start to get iron toxicity. Now, those people who are taking retina, retinol, retin-A products for the skin, you might want to be a little cautious, but, and also those who don't have any problems with leaky gut, you're fine with vitamin A. You're not going to have vitamin A toxicity unless you're having some issues with either, because I use a retinol on my skin. I mean, I do a dab of it. I don't go and put a bunch of retin-A on my face, or retinol. No, ma'am. I have to eat liver and so so I would say a really good therapeutic level would be about two ounces a day or two ounces every other day to get to get the um, the health benefits of the vitamin D E A K selenium zinc copper and iron vitamin C do you feel lonely at times being in a country in a country or the country? This is a great question. I want to answer this. Hell no. So, I've moved to a small town. Now, when I was in Texas, it was really hard to make friends with people there for some reason. But, uh, this new gym that I... Well, I know the reason why, but I'm not going to go into it. Um, there's kind of like two ethnic groups that don't really get along, so they've created this, you know, like the Hispanic, Mexican, and white, and then there's this stale thing that developed historically over time with them, so it's just dry, especially in South Texas. But here, oh my God, like, Oh, I think you need about having a real channel, but um, when it comes to these, and I'll, I'm going to answer the people who came in to get the health. When you want to know about like, you know, the liver and what does thymus take, taste like, and you know, what can, can you have an iron overload or can you have vitamin A or E liver overload? I will go more into that. I'm just going to digress for a second and explain loneliness because I think this is such a great subject because I titled this video. It's not that hard. Um, I was talking to a young guy. I've talked to him like three days in a row. And we talked today for like an hour and a half. And we're like, whew, just magnetized talking to each other. It's not a sexual thing for me. Maybe subconsciously, but consciously it's not. Um, we, you know when you're talking to someone and you're not bored, 
They're not talking about themselves all day long. You're sharing information. Uh, no one's getting triggered on the subject. No matter what the subject is, it's just interesting to hear another person's perspective. Um, so we went in all how young people get triggered very easily and they're being brainwashed to get triggered and whatever. Um, but he, I, he, we talked about loneliness and I said to him, you know, conversations like this are fulfilling for me. So I get that human internet interaction of just having like really interesting conversation. And then I'm going home to my animals where I'm so occupied. I don't feel lonely whatsoever for me to not to feel I don't feel lonely because I've created a reality where I don't, I'm so busy that I don't feel like something's missing. I left Los Angeles, Hollywood, California, and I'm living in a small freaking majority white town in Tennessee. And it's the country, it's country. They, they, they are like the way everybody there burned down. I mean, they have this super, oh, that scared me. They have this super, I need to, speaking of, I need to put the new cell phone SIM card in. I haven't done it yet. Now I'll be paying for two freaking services unless I stop the other one. But the point is, is that like, I want to build a house and I want to do it on the cheap and I want to fence the rest of my property and I need to, I have to do it on the cheap. Oh, by the way, you guys have a donation on my website if you want to help donate. Um, for, for It's a fund for my animals to help build what I need to. So I keep forgetting to talk about it. Uh, you can also go and buy meal plans. I am updating them, but if you still want... My meal, meal plans now are still good, but I'm updating them. And I have a course. So I have a course that's $15 a month where I cover... If you, if you, have, a, if you have severe hypoglycemia, especially a, a gallbladder problem, I start you on carbs low carb and starches and then I graduate you over to keto if you've got severe histamine and you don't have a gallbladder problem I teach you how to do carnivore for the short term to then eventually go to keto omnivore because you have to be in ketosis while you are being carnivore and there's a way that you've got to do it so you don't completely destroy yourself and lower your diamine oxidase and and start to have issues with electrolytes and chronic dehydration but um the um the deciding to move i felt this urgency in my stomach to leave california oh somebody's highlighting a question okay um i felt an urgency so i would need i was looking for things that would almost be like homesteading but not stephanie is your course available on your website yeah no it's actually it's you sign up through my site and it's on facebook Right now is another project that I'm working on. I'm rebuilding my entire site, my all my meal plans, and I'm putting the course on my site. So then the Facebook book would just be a support group. But even that, I think I'm going to take over to the tell and the gram. Um, yeah, so I can have more. Autonomy. Um, let me see, is your a course on the website? I really would love to be coached by you, but I only saw meal, meal plans in our consultation. Yeah, it's $15. It's a, no, you can go to my website. You can go drop down the meal uh, menu and it'll say, um, course. It's 15 bucks a month. I don't, did I say an hour? A month. But I work my ass off right now. We're sort of doing a revisiting how to keto adapt. Um, on my course, I, I go over, over everything, leaky gut, candida, histamine intolerance, um, autoimmunity, thyroid, uh, fibroids, um, low testosterone, high estrogen. Um, and I've gone so much over like, you know, acidic stomach, you know, gallbladder. I've gone over these subjects so much and I stopped literally just sort of talking about how you actually keto adapt on carnivore and on keto omnivore and if you can't do those two then how to do carbs and then graduate and that's what we're doing right now we're re it's almost like we're kind of almost doing like a slight challenge um but even to like using a glucometer how to test for your glucose your ketones that's what that's what's on my course page right now 
And I really highly suggest you guys signing up for it because it is only $15 a month. And if you only want to do one month, then you can cancel your subscription. And that's through stephanieperson.com. So, um, you know, if, if, if you guys want to test that out, by all means, it's, I work my ass off on it. So, or ass up and round and apple, bonita apple bum. And as the guys at the auto shop said in Texas, they called me buns and roses. Okay. Um, awesome. I can actually afford, um, $15 a month. I'd love to have a conversation with you and the general, especially since, oh, I will also, I was doing on my course page, um, 15 minute consultations on Saturdays. I will start that up again. I had to stop because like I was moving and the horses and the, oh, finding property. Like I literally put up a fence and power before I actually bought the property which then my agent freaked out and said, you're not supposed to do that, but I did it anyway. Because like when you're buying property, all the, all the contractors, all of the people, they're like booked until like September. I was like, okay, I buy the property, but I can't move because there's no power. Oh no, we're doing it now. We're doing a fence. A fencer's like, you're lucky. I will squeeze you in. Otherwise I won't be available until the end of August. And I was like, all right, let's do it. Um, I have those eggs in well, and a well water are yummy. Okay, awesome. I need issues. Where can I sign up for that? I didn't hear. Oh, stephanieperson.com. Uh, let me see here. I also left LA. Oh, you did, CC, and came to the south. It's nice to have family here, too. Yes, yeah, so people don't know, I actually was born and raised in California, and my mother's actually from Tennessee moved uh moved to california lived lived in california for almost 30 years my dad they she moved out with my dad my dad left when i was two and so basically i'm a cali girl and i became a professional skateboarder and left off to europe when i was 19 years old started skateboarding when i was 16. i'm almost 55 so do the math went to europe toured for i lived in amsterdam in the Sumatra Strat, uh, I rented an apartment in the Sumatra Strat in um, the Indonesian part of Amsterdam. I skated there in, in Amsterdam, and it was cold. Oh my God! I can I have so many stories from that trip, moving to to Amsterdam, and then I toured some more. Ended up living in Sweden, so you guys might hear me talk Swedish to anyone who's from Scandinavia, like, I'll be like, you know, from people from, some from Norge, I hope you can speak Swedish to people from come from Norge, and I speak a little Dansk, some some people from come from Denmark, and I speak a little Swedish, and I try to speak a little Finnish. So I, you know, I went off to Europe and of course I learned, you know, I'm busy in Deutsch. I had Deutsch. Um, and now, you know, like I'm, I tried to learn a little French and a little German and Dutch and Swedish, all the Euro Eurocentric languages. Anyway, the point is that um, I learned a lot about culture and food in other countries. Like they eat a lot of fish in Sweden. And people don't understand, like when I'm trying to figure out people's diets, like, I don't do the whole eat for your blood type nonsense. I'm like, let's just talk about where your body, where your ethnicity is from regionally, like where on the planet are you European fully, like ancestry goes back several generations. Are you black? Are you black mixed? I am, but of course a lot of Americans are mixed anyway. They're not pure African. Um, uh, if you have dark skin, um, regionally, what, what would you, if you're like from a, 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 if you are, are you, if you're an indigenous person from the Americas, you know, they're more primed to be able to eat certain fruits. Uh, these are the things I like to learn about when I've been, when I go to other cultures, I look like, what are they eating? Um, I like to dispel a lot of the myths like pork you know here you guys see you've got pork belly that i made into bacon people think that pork is so bad for you and they don't even know why especially when black people talk that way i'm just like i don't do pig i don't do hog you know that's it's unclean 
And I hear that from a lot of black people. I'm like, who, what brainwashing? Y'all, slaves ate chitlins, the guts from the pigs. You are tripping. Tons of nutrition in the intestine. If people are dealing with issues with diamine oxidase, they, they cannot deal with the histamine. Intestine, kidney, and the thymus. This, these are the foods you want to be eating, people. And don't do that. And I don't eat liver. Gar when I hear adults talk that way, I'm embarrassed for them. Because, like, what if you don't have food? What, you're going to eat crickets and soy like they want us to eat? Okay, let's see. Perth, Western Australia finally caught... Oh, yeah. That's right, because it's morning for you guys. Or it's, like, probably, like, noontime for you guys. All of you, it's the truth. Ah, Solar Priest says, you're finally officially one of my heroes. I appreciate it. I do. Thymus is a huge wow. Thymus is a game changer to you guys. It's healthy. Y'all need to get on it. Like, I had it everywhere because I was in Mexico. I mean, Mexico. I was in South Texas. I could get it, like, at freaking H-E-B. I was kind of worried that I wouldn't find thymus in Tennessee, but I found thymus. Yeah. I get pounds of grass-fed, finished beef suet from a regenerative farm, and I eat like cheese i wouldn't do the cheese because the casein i just wouldn't cc but i'm really happy we get you moved from la you and i went through a lot of things similar i also made tallow from it yeah it's a good it's it is this good to get into ketosis yes um leaf lard and and suet aren't the best when it comes to sustaining ketosis you got to do some like straight like other tallow other than around the organs or the intestine butter if you can lard if you can do you do you, do you season the thymus i just put salt and pepper on it or a little bit of pepper it's a nightshade i put definitely put salt on it uh i need to get an air fryer for this thymus so you can use an air fryer or a grill but if you pan fry it thymus is like rubber that's enough don't boil it, don't, um, and don't, uh, just pan fry it, don't. It's only unclean if you feed it the wrong stuff, that's my thoughts. It's unclean, not if you just feed it the wrong stuff. It's if you keep pigs in pens, and you're throwing their food, and they're eating their crap, like, you know, they, they need to be able to free range. She wrote, oh, that's cute, Solo. Shiro. That's really cool. I like that. Hero Shiro. That's dope. I'm gonna write that down. Shiro. Okay. I need to probably check on my bacon. Um Let me see. It can be difficult outside of work. I don't speak to anyone. I can go an entire weekend without speaking at all. Still, I'm happy with my life. I mean, I don't live like that, right? Because we have technology. So all my friends who don't like the nonsense going down in California who are all leaving, we stay in contact and talk about like, well, how are you moving? What state are you moving to? What city? What are you doing? And then like, I like, you know, I met this young guy at the gym and we have the best conversations like ever, like ever, it's the best. Like we talk about all aspects of soci sociology and psychology and human behavior and working out and diet and all that kind of stuff. You know, being black in a white town in the South and you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, we talk about um, my, <sighs> I told you guys, I did a video saying like a, a rant video because the horse hauler, I was asking about a septic tank before I moved to my land. And he said, um, it's really easy to build a septic tank with a 55 gallon drum. Um, it's really easy to do. He goes for the, for an RV camper, not for a house. He, and he goes, all I need to do is grab a couple chigas with an N and, and I was like, Oh man, this dude thinks I'm white. Oh, that's going to be interesting when he comes to pick up because he's hauling my RV. 
And when he met me, he was so friggin'. It was not okay. Um, yeah. But then, um, cause he was from Alabama and then that's just how some white people talk here. Then my electrician, he also didn't know that I was white until he, I mean, white, a human. Uh, he didn't know I was black until he met me, but the pavilion like the shelter that i'm under with my camper they tried to put electricity in it and failed miserably and i said what do you think about the job of you know the ex-owners trying to put power in here and he goes legit the dude's like a foot from my face he goes that's about chiga quality uh um chiga he said chiga with an n quality made and i was like what'd you say he goes, oh, I mean, that's just, that's just an expression. So it's N-word quality, mate, is it? I said, did you know that a black man discovered electricity? It wasn't Tesla and it wasn't Bell. And he was like, oh, uh. And I said to him, look, I am not, I don't care. I don't care. That word does not bother me at all. Okay. It's annoying, but I don't feel anything. I don't feel hurt. Oh my God. So not okay. I don't feel that way. I've seen the Confederate, you know, the flag and it is not triggered me at all. And, uh, cause I know that that electrician who made that comment, is in love with this brown chocolate okay it just is what it is nah it's not i mean to be honest they talk that way but they meet you and they love you just how it is especially when they're older when they're from that older like he's 57 he's from old school and i said look i said i get i said i get it and i said i'm not offended but I want to educate you. I said, um, he's like, I don't mean anything about it. I go, no, I understand. I understand because I know that he just thinks that I'm the hottest thing since sliced bread. But I said to him, if you're in an all black neighborhood and somebody called you a, you know, a white piece of shite quality made, I said, how would you, that? how would that make you feel? And he goes, that wouldn't make me feel very good. And I said, yeah. I said, don't let expressions be like, you know, we might say, oh, it's raining cats and dogs. We're not seeing visually in cats and dogs. So when he said it was chigga quality made, he didn't think. That's just the way his daddy taught him to talk. And that's how he began to talk. And when I made that comment to him, he, he like understood clearly, you know, that's dumb. But I... I have never, and I'm going to tell you this right now, the part of Tennessee I'm in is very white. Um, I'm going to tell you right now. I have never met in my life besides, okay, besides one place. And that is uh, Tanz Tanzania, Tanzania, East Africa. Besides them people, the people in this town are the nicest that I've seen since my trip to Africa in my 20s. <laughs> legit they are so this old man was coming out of the supermarket today and he said he said well hello and i said well hello to you and he goes isn't today such and it was it was sprinkling he goes isn't today such a beautiful day and i said it sure is because you just told me that it was and then he kept walking i i had two white girls one in the gym and one coming out of Home Depot. Legit. Young girls, like early 20s. Okay, girls, young girls don't do this anymore to each other, regardless of the ethnicity. But especially white girls. And both of them said, oh my God, you're so pretty. 
And I was like, oh, you're so pretty. <laughs> pretty. I was like, you're really pretty. You're beautiful, too. And they're just so sweet. It's really how you act, you know? I had more issues in Texas, to be honest, than in Tennessee. What are some signs that someone, a human, may have a parasite? That is a great question, sparkly one. Let's talk about parasites as I eat bacon, which people think there's parasites. Let me eat the soft part. Mmm. 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 Okay. Sorry, guys. Forgot to turn off my um, sound. The signs would be bloating. Mm hmm Gassy. Um, you have like itchy skin, redness, rashes, itchy butt. Mm-hmm. 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 Some people have histamine reactions to their parasites, which then that's headaches and bones aching and tired and bloated and diarrhea and yeah, that's, a, that's the signs of parasite. Oh, I've been talking over an, over an hour now. Jamie says, you're my fave. Love your farm and animals. Thank you. I have to get a fence up because I want to get some goats and I want to get some chickens. I want some goats and chickens. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting cows though. I was on enough cattle ranches. Oh my God, cows are just, I can't deal with the cow dung. Their poop is so disgusting. I'm biased against horses because I think the cows are kind of dumb. Just sign up for your coach, of course. Okay, I'll, I'll put you on the page when, you, when I get off. What's up, Jamie? I've heard that grinding the teeth jaws while you sleep can be a sign of parasite worms. Yeah, that too. Uh, it's also, it's not just parasites. People grind their teeth because their cortisol is too high. Sounds like you, sounds like when you eat a uh, Taco Bell late at night. What, eating this? Mmm, so good. I just, I want to go more into lifestyle stuff. You guys know I'm starting to do vlogs. <clears throat> I've got so much footage in my camera and my phone. Since my phone, my phone didn't even work today. I filmed so many things. You have meet, reached your max limit of recording. Now your phone might dysfunction and it started dysfunctioning. But it's not that hard to farm, find meat. Alana says, Stephanie, do you have any family members who get under your skin? All of them. Um, if so, how do you deal with them? That's a great question. Um, they all get under my skin. Actually, my mom came here and I had her come over the weekend. And actually, actually, my mom, when she came this weekend, she was actually not complaining for the first time. I think in years. I think my mom's house is like a prison for her she was very sweet when she came out here she was just she was easy going and we were 10 minutes away of me dropping her back at home and the complaint my mom complains non-stop about everything non-stop and i can't handle it anymore i'm like mom why don't we try to figure fi let's focus on something positive i'm here now in tennessee i can help take care of you she's like don't be rude to me <laughs> and she <laughs> Oh my God. Um, because my brother encouraged my mother to do the thing, I'm kind of pissed. Like I'm really pissed at him. And I just have a brother. My father left when I was young, so bye. And then my mom comes from a family of 10. So I got a bazillion cousins. And because my mom's from Tennessee, a lot of them live here, but they're like strangers to me. And um, that's a whole nother story. I'll do stuff stories, story. story I'm going to do some stuff, stuff. I watched this channel called, I'm going to start doing stories like he does. 
his channel he's just you know there's a lot of storytellers they do talk about like crimes and weird crap and spooky stuff and i want to tell stories out of my life i know it sounds very narcissistic but i got some interesting stories i'm the first professional african-american with a black chick skateboarder in the history of the sport and i'm 55 okay so i got stories for days like you know uh one of the skaters tried to r i'll say scrape me but with an r um army in a hotel room and i've had somebody chase me down to my vehicle I've had somebody like put their hands around my neck and try to take every bit of life out of me. Um, I've been in fights at the skateboard competitions where somebody tried to beat me up, guys try to beat me up. And I'm like, oh, you chose the wrong girl to mess with. I don't care if I'm five foot three. You, This is not going to go down well. I got stories from that. Stories of triumph. Uh, stories of when I busted my knee in a skateboard competition in Stockholm, Sweden, and how I went through uh, 10 surgeries and then turned into this with no cardio, you know, the ability to, to be able to stay really, I'm really proud of the fact that I'm able to stay really lean, you guys, at the age of 55, natty, I want to use these stories as a way to inspire women that they don't have to be estrogen dominant and thyroid haven and you know younger women who've got fibroids and endometriosis i want to encourage people to be healthy and that it is worth it and that if you don't like your job and if you don't like you know people trying to stick stuff in your body then change it and i want to encourage you guys to move somewhere else and live a different life let me see holy cow okay jesus well, since you're in Tennessee, you can get protection easily. Consti constitutional. you damn right. I actually went to Texas first because I thought they would be badasses. A lot of people lost their badassness. I don't know what's going down there. Tennessee is way more hot of me, as the Swedish say. say. People are really friggin' nice here. And there's more of a sense of a community. That's what I feel. Uh, holy cow, I love those languages. My hubby is Swedish and Norwegian. Well, Anita, did you learn any Swedish? Lärde ingen svenska, eller hur? Försökte att åka till Norge eller Sverige. Okay, uh, Joy, I'm sorry. I have to work. My sister also has encouraged my mom to, to, but I managed to talk her out of it. Thank God. My sister lives in perpetual fear. And ever since she started going to college, she started spewing this government talk, talking points. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you can't even write this, what's been going on in a movie. Nobody would believe it. It is so stupid right now. That's the reason why I don't feel alone. You know, I'm just like, okay, Stephanie, make sure your animals, your horses are well taken care of. They're all rescues and provide a good home and put, you know, people cannot stand how much love I give to those animals. Oh my God, you spoil them. I'm like, I do not spoil them. I don't put little pink ribbons on them. They live outside in the monks, the wilderness, domesticated. I feed them and I hug them and I kiss them and I love them. That's all I do. Okay. I don't, I'm going to get a dog though. I don't go and put, you know, I don't have a dog where they're inside and they're in my bed. Like they're outside. Okay. I don't put horse jackets or blankets on them when it's 70 degrees outside like they do in California. Funny thing too, because she's 33 and I'm 25. I'm part of the most what targeted generation and super lonely because I'm not made or mad. Sorry. But people look at me and say, you're gone. You've gone mad. You're not like us. People really try. Oh, oh okay, cool. Um, what were we referencing? So sad it's all being hidden from the masses. Yep. Thank you, friend. He lived in a long, a long life. But he definitely came down with the congestive heart failure. So, yeah. 
Um, can't believe the last two years are real life. Seriously, I'm like, what the F? Seriously, Jamie, like... Sometimes I'm like, I, I'm exhausted, you guys. What it took for me to move a horse out of California with no truck and no trailer and not know where you're going, it was hard. And when I went to Texas, Texas, the people, a lot of people were just, if anybody's followed my story knows how horrific that experience was. It it has, it changed my life on how I view a lot of things. And uh, getting to Tennessee was very hard. And I moved to raw land and then I don't know anyone. And you know, it's, it's, it's exhausting. And I take impeccable care of my horses. Thunder is a paint colored horse. He has pink skin under his fur. So his skin reacts to everything. And all the bugs here are tearing up his skin. He's getting rain rot on his hoofs. And I'm just constantly taking care of him. And I found a way to get his hoofs to dry out. I found a way to manage the bugs so skin's not overreactive. You deserve a lot of rest, Steph. You've done a lot of good and people value you for who you are. It's okay to rest and enjoy the nature and seclusion i'm lucky to have learned that myself early exactly consumer all of you says congratulations to all the pure blood <laughs> you weren't controlled um yeah i mean it's hard like even like with dating guys i'm like yo you got that stuff in you that stuff's like in your pores. You sweat that crap out. Like, yo, it's in your saliva. It's in your booty juice. It's in your, your frontal juice. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I'm sorry. Mm -mm. You better show me your papers that you don't have that stuff because I ain't having it on me at all. I hope people don't get offended by me. I'm just being silly, but, you know, actually saying what I really think. But, yeah. Well, guys, it's an hour and a half and, you know, it's getting late and I got to finish eating this food. And I know Brooke's like, oh, um, but I just want to inspire people to quit their jobs, get new jobs, learn a new skill. I want to teach people how to eat healthy and that like food is not entertainment. It's nourishment. You can either age gracefully or you can age like a freaking corpse. It's up to you. Diamonds reminds me of the texture of calamari. Uh, yes, but when you cook it, then it's not. Uh, rewriting the conventional medical knowledge uh, subversion and its most. Yes. Well, that's why people like us take care of ourselves and watch the type of water that you drink and the air that you breathe because that's how you get it. It's not the people. It's through those things, but people don't refuse to see another, you know, I'm like, if they say, if I, if the blubberment, but with a G, if the blubberment is saying something, I know it's the complete opposite. That's just what I believe now. I'm like, oh, if they say it's this, I'm like, oh, it's that. The biggest, like, what is it when you, what is it when you, um. What is it when people are, I can't forget the expression. I forget. Like somebody's hyping something, they're projecting. That's it. <laughs> that's my new word for the G and the O and the mother second G V. Uh, blubberment. Yeah, I'm sure love my, what is it? Smart particle, riddled air and fluoride yeah thank you central skankers <laughs> it's so funny because like i'm watching people come in and out with the numbers like when i when i go off the subject and i don't talk about keto i lose people and then i lose the people when i start talking about you know a black chick talking about the blubber mint people get offended very easily 
But the rest who don't, hugs. And as the Swedish say, Pussa Chroma. Yuska Chroma Yuskala. Thank you everyone for joining today's live. I'm going to go more into a series, I think, of it's not that difficult to measure your food. It's not that difficult to. Okay, sorry, somebody called. Stick around because you're a real person in dying breed these days. I'm definitely real. I sure love my... Oh, yeah, I read that. I'm real. That's the reason why my people like... I've been shadow banned. If I had the real numbers, I'd be like 300,000 subscribers right now. So it's not that my channel doesn't grow. People subscribe all the time, and then they get booted out on the back end, and then they subscribe and get booted out on the back end. It's probably because I talk about the blubber mint. <laughs> oh, God. Um, but, uh, you know, plus I don't, like, lie about intermittent, like, people like, intermittent fast and eat one meal a day and don't eat fat and eat a bunch of protein. And I don't do any of that crap. I wonder if the, if your electrician watches your lives. Oh, no. Oh, hell no. No, he just doesn't look at YouTube. Like, those people here, like, watch TV. Sorry about that. They're like TV watchers. He's, he's he's like 57. It's younger people that I meet. Like the guy, the young guy at my gym, he, he found me right away online. It's like all you have to do is Google like black pro skater and then I come up. And you know, then like all the keto stuff comes up. And he's like, oh yeah. And he's, he's married. He's like, I showed my wife you. This is what's funny, right? And he's like, he's a white kid. He's young. He's in his 20s. And he showed his wife me. And, and he's like, Oh, she's old. He called me. She goes, well, is she attractive? And he says, eh, she's okay. And then his wife looked me up on her own. And she's like, she's not okay. <laughs> you lied. <laughs> she's not old. Well, yes, I am old, but you know. Glad you're loving Tennessee and the fur babies. Yeah, thank you, Suzette. Yeah, it's been cool. Like, today was the first day. I actually felt cold outside in five months. I was dying in Texas. It was so hot. Before I even found you, I put together the tons of protein aged you terribly. Yep. Tons of protein does age you terribly. Messes your biliary duct system, too, because of all those bodybuilder types look 50. Well, they look old because they're doing a little in the, in the, in the ass. Okay, the arse. Um, they well, they also look old because they they're just doing things wrong. I mean, they're drinking protein shakes and eating chicken breast and rice like the worst foods ever, like tuna. Yeah, and then they're taking stuff on top of that. But thank you everyone for joining today's live. I will be back. I hate to do lives at night, but I it was just days were passing and I couldn't get a live in. I've just been fixing fences and putting up the remote control and. I got an Amish shelter and I, um, um, I, I don't know. I've just been doing stuff nonstop, nonstop. And then you got, I should have filmed it, but I just, I just didn't have time. I changed my own fuel filter today. I was saying to the electrician, I'm like, my truck's not starting properly. He's like, it's the pump or it's the filter. And he's like, you can change it. I'm like, is it in the engine bay? No, it's going to be under the truck. I'm like, Frack! He's like, you can do it, Stephanie. You need two crescent wrenches. Now you can take it off and put a new one on. He's like, but he's really cool. He's like, do not go under the truck with your head. He's like, go under with your feet and move to the side. When you, when you pull off that filter, gasoline is going to, and he's like, get a bucket. All that gasoline is going to start pull, coming out of the lines. And so here I am trying to save money by changing my own fuel filter. So I should have filmed it because I want people to be inspired. He's like, if it's the fuel pump, he's like, I'm going to walk you through how to change the fuel pump. So my other car is a Mini Cooper. That's going to need to require a freaking mechanic because that engine's all smashed in some little tight space. But my Chevy Silverado, it's easy to work on. I can't change the tranny, but the tranny's been changed anyway. Thank God I was cooler today. I'm in Nashville, and my dog, I'm a dog walker. This 
well, Olive Eater, wasn't it nice today? I was like, oh my God, this is like amazing weather. Hey Steph, just wondering what is the ratio of fat meat uh, cruciferous do you personally eat? Me personally? I'm only eating cruciferous vegetables one time a day. So the rest is just fat and meat. I'm eating between 50 and 60 grams of total protein a day. I am not total, not weight, but total grams of protein. Total, not not weight, weighted. Uh, I'm eating about 100, not 100. Um, if, you, if you break down protein per meal, it's about 100, which is about four ounces. It's about a hundred, maybe like 85 to around a hundred grams of protein per meal. So it's just under four ounces. The carbs are probably like total carbs are like 15 and the fats probably around 220. I'll do what I eat in a meal. I just haven't had any time you guys. I'm like burnt out, exhausted, tired from like today sitting there like you know under my truck and just um oh, like calling the freaking mechanic am i doing it right he's like you're fine you're fine do you see this yes is there a rubber thing on it yes uh, oh i can't think right now a rubber ring to, that's next to the bowl that'll prevent the gas from coming out blah 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 before you go because i already forgot to do forgot LOL, do you do one-on-one? -on -one? Yes, I do. You consumer you can go to my website, stephanieperson.com if anybody needs a consultation. I I feel like I I hate when people are cocky. But I'm gonna be straight with you. I've been doing consultations, I don't know, for a long time. I mean, I'm like I hit, when once I hit four thousand, I stopped counting, and this is what, six years ago. So I know my shit. I know. I'm confident. I'm really confident that I can help people and help you guys in any kind of way. Some kind of way. Uh, incredible that you are doing engine work. Well, I have to, right? I I uh, restored the truck. I painted the bedliner. I would um, bedline bed. Changed the headliner. You know, painted the wheel wells. Got new tires, rims, grill, lights. Tore the seats out, washed the car, scrubbed it, took all the paint off by hand, uh, put the dash in. Uh, the only thing I put in, put in was my backup camera and blah, blah, blah. How old is Mama? I love, she's 78. I love how she she and Thunder... Oh, me? I'm almost 55. Thunder got on. Oh, my, my mom. Oh, yeah, my mom's 78. Oh, you saw it on my Instagram. My Instagram, Stephanie Ketogenic. He just loved on her. She was just, she was so excited to meet Thunder. She kept saying, I want to meet them before I die. And before I'd say, stop doing that. But I do think my mom is unlimited days now. I just feel it by getting that thing in her body. I definitely want a consultation so we can, so I can get personalized, a personalized plan. And, and I just can't afford it yet. Now I understand. I totally understand. The page will be definitely advantageous for now. All right, guys, time for me to go. Oh, heck, I love, I love a good story. Ah, oh, thank you, Anita. Oh, I, I watched this guy named Mr. Ballin or something. I love him. I love exactly how he tells his stories. I'm going to do tell stories like that with pictures and images and sound effects. Because girlfriend's got some stories about gurus, about my skateboard adventures, about moving here, about like those comments that some of these men make. And I think it would be fun to put it in storytelling format. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining my chat. I'm Stephanie Person, in person, and I have been doing this keto thing for 15 years solid, ever since my mom came, came down with glioblastoma. And uh, yeah, I feel like I'm getting younger and better and wiser. Um, I'm really happy to not be influenced by the media. And I feel very excited to have my fur babies that keep me sane and 
Thunder is literally legit my husband right now. So if there's any mail takers out there, you better watch out for Thunder because he's actually legit my husband. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your evening and day for Australians and people from uh, Middle East and from Asia. And I'm out. See you guys tomorrow if you're from Europe. Bye, guys. And I'm out. Peace.